Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. And today I have an opportunity to work on a beautiful Pen 105C fishing reel. This is from the 1970s. This is the Silver Series. Absolutely beautiful, but listen. Wow. Somebody called that a flower sifter. They might be right. Uh, sounds like a burn. We're going to show you how to take this reel apart, identify that cause, try to uh, service this reel, and uh, put it back together again to give it a second chance. So while we do that, we're going to encourage you to subscribe to our channel. And if you do subscribe, please hit that notification button, and that'll uh, let you know when I'm posting the videos, and uh, you'll be able to make a determination as to whether you want to see that or not. Also, this is pretty interesting here. This uh, should be smooth. And I'm seeing all kinds of bubbling up here. It's almost like this reel was near a fire. I don't know uh, what's caused all of that, but it's got a, uh, a almost a melted con uh, consistency to it that's uh, unusual for the reel. If you wanted to make this a, a collectible, you probably would want to replace that button. The rest of it's in beautiful condition. The, the paint on it is very nice, and overall it's a nice looking reel. Oh, we've just removed the uh, spool. One of the things I noticed on the spool, it's also a defect here, the little clicker for the noisemaker is gone on the spool. I don't know if it broke off. It looks like it's broken off, but uh, it's not in the bottom of the spool here, so I'm not quite sure what's going on. So sometimes looks are a little bit deceiving there. All right, we're going to take the case off. You're going to notice that the reel is, uh, well, we got a problem in both of these, don't we? We have no anti-reverse, so uh, we're being very consistent here with the reels that have been sent in. The, uh, re the reels uh, came in a uh, package. Uh, we've just removed the handle, and uh, three of the reels now have not had a, uh, an anti-reverse, and they've had a bad, uh, maybe I should check that, a bad bail that didn't trip. Not the bail trips on this one. So looks can be deceiving, and that's kind of a, a story or a lesson to be learned here. If you're out surf, uh, surfing the net, maybe you're on eBay or one of those channels, and somebody's got a reel like this that, uh, well, it looks beautiful cosmetically, make sure that you read the full descriptions. Just just don't go buy in the reel based on, uh, well, hey, that looks great, right? You may find that there's other issues associated with the reel that you know, require some repair. Of course, if you find that, you can come to my channel and watch the videos on how to do it, and uh, maybe you'll be okay with that. All right, inside the reel, this is a very simple reel. A lot of folks like to compare the Silver Series from the different manufacturers. You had a Silver Series from Penn. You had one from Daiwa, which was the, the fives and the 7,000 Cs. You had uh, Ryobi made a, uh, a Silver Series reel. There's a, a host of them made in Japan. And well, if you look here, it says made in Japan. Well, you're gonna have to see it that way, I guess, made in Japan. But uh, a lot of people consider this the lesser of those reels because it only had the single ball bearing. If you wanted to, you could hot rod the reel and replace the bushings with bearings. All right, I just put the bushing back into the case here, and all of my pieces and parts, except for the bigger ones, go into a parts tray. The bigger ones, well, you're not going to lose those as easily, so I just kind of set those off to the side. Next up, you want to remove the crosswind arm. It usually can come right off that pin, just like that. Note the, there are two sides to this. There's a flat side and a rounded side, and it's the rounded side that points to you. That uh, gives me the opportunity to tell you to take pictures along the way. If you take the pictures, well, you can see that if you ever had a question. Now, that one's pretty much uh, symmetrical cross wind arm, but that's not always the case as you work on your fishing reel. So sometimes you're going to find that that, um, that arm is maybe like the, the number nine or the letter G it's opposing. And you better know which side goes where because it could affect the overall performance of the reel if you put it in reverse. We've just removed the screw from the crosswind block. That goes into my parts tray. And now if I hold the crosswind block, I am able to remove the axle shaft. Um, aside from a little bit of dried grease that's been acting as a glue, that came out easily. And that's a good way to test to see if you've got a, a uh, worn axle shaft. If it slides in and out easily, like this one does, the axle shaft is fine. Sometimes those axle shafts get bent 
which causes hard performance. So you want to notice that as you're taking the reel apart. Now, I do that all the time. Sometimes I don't mention it, but that's one of the tests that you want to run. If somebody says, well, I've got a reel that's performing poorly, I'd like you to work on it. All right, main gear. That slides out easy enough. And we can see it's been some time since this reel's been worked on. Same issue here. We have old grease on that uh, bushing. And it looks like we have what I would call an explosion of grease here. And that always makes me wonder because something like that, well, that hasn't been applied by a brush. At least that would be my guess. That hasn't been applied by a brush. So what would my guess be? White lithium grease. Somebody probably just put a spray pan in there. You can see I'm not, uh, not a CSI or anything trying to figure out blood splatter or that, but that's, uh, that's pretty much a telltale sign that something got a squirt of something there rather than uh, kind of being grease on the main gear that got thrown off by centrifugal force or anything like that. So we're going to do our best to clean the inside of this case. And we'll... Uh, Got to get up top here because that's where the grind is coming from. So I can't really reach behind there to clean the case, but I can after I take the um, rotor off. So let's go do that. In this case, I can use a simple wrench because there's not a deep lip on the rotor. So I'm going to do that right now. This is also going to tell us what's going on with the anti-reverse, right? Yeah. So. More of the same. Any guesses what's happening here? Well, we can see it. The rotor is in the off position. This should be coming back in. Whatever this spray stuff is, it just clogged the whole mechanism. That's probably why we have that noise in that, uh, that bearing piece as well. So, that can get restored relatively easily. First thing you want to do is kind of wipe it down. Second thing you want to do, I'm just going to spray it with a little bit of penetrating oil. And after you work that in a moment or two, doesn't take much. And you can see what happened there, right? So now, what we'll do is a little bit more of a light scrape here. We're going to flow it, and then, oh, we got the back is stuck too. There we go. Well, it's starting to work. All right. Well, we're going to clean all that up. We're going to take the screw out of here so that we can get in and get that out of the way. Do a better job of cleaning that up. That's going to release my dog. And also you have a ratchet here on the main gear that's controlling the rest of this. So the click ratchet comes off and we're just mucked up here with the old grease and junk. So all of that's got to come off. Just like that. And you can see, this is why it wasn't sliding below. It's just full of that stuff. Note, I'm going to just leave that as it is. How much of that stuff is here? So spray lubrications, whether this is lithium grease or some other household grease. It's not a fishing reel grease. But some spray lubrications just become sticky. And after a while, they're not going to perform properly. Well, if you took a picture of this assembly before we took it off, you know that the point on this goes down. And that this was the point hook that went around it. And that whole assembly is going to sit like that on your pinion gear. But we've got work to do. We've got to take the main gear off and that bearing. I think that bearing is probably got the same junk in it. Let's see if we can find a replacement bearing. That's probably the simplest thing to do. If not, we'll try and clean that up as best we can. We're going to take the two screws that are holding the collar on, which are even that's hard to see. But uh, let's probably want to clean that off too. And you can just see how you almost have to use a screwdriver or a scraper to get this old stuff off. So there's no question that that's the gumminess that was causing the anti-reverse to fail. And it's probably what I'm guessing is gummed up the burning inside. So 
first part is off the gumminess. I'm going to use a piece of steel bolt to see if I can't clean up the rest of that. And that is your anti-reverse piece. And it's going to go like this, remember? When it sits on the post, that hook is going to be in into the gear like that. It's going to catch on the ridge. I'm going to take the two screws for this, put them in the corner of my box. I'm going to take the screw for the anti-reverse. I'm going to leave all that out up top here for a moment. We'll come back to that. I'm going to clean up the inside of this main gear. I want to check and inspect the teeth on this. And I want to make sure they're all clean. So I'm going to grab a bristle brush, pull that off. So what appeared to be a gear or a, a burring wine is actually several different things inside this reel, but none of them that can't be cleaned and repaired if you kind of like what you're doing there. All right, we did remove the collar. Here's your collar. And that's got the same stuff on it. And I think Chris right now is probably saying it's time for me to change my paper towel. So let's go right ahead and do that. I've been accused of getting more use out of a paper towel than is warranted. Bad for the paper towel industry, I guess. So long as you don't transfer the grease back onto your projects, that, that's probably the key element there. All right, that's off. We know that's the top. Put that right with the two screws. We should be able to pull this out now. Here we are. And now we can take care of cleaning all that out of other stuff off. And that's going to require a couple of different steps. We're going to use a penetrating oil. You saw me use that paper towel. There's some nooks and crannies in there that we got to get to. And I find that these cotton swabs are probably the best to do with that. And I'm not going to remove that spring which controls the anti-reverse override, but you can see how it sits here. Maybe you've done it and you're looking for a video that's telling you how to do that. The leg of the spring comes here, that's your torsion end, and it sits in a little groove on this side here. And then, of course, it runs back and forth. So I want to flip that switch so I can get the old uh, grease out of the side. I'll use a pick to do what I best I can with cleaning up some of that spray. And that's the other problem with the spray. It gets into places where it shouldn't be. So uh, it, uh, it's not a good alternative. To doing it the right way the first time. All right, one more shot of that. We'll let that kind of work its way in there. And then I want to get underneath here where the rest of that spray is. Again, I'll start with a paper towel, see if we can't mop most of that up with the, the biggest pieces. Then we'll try and get the rest of it out with the combination of that cotton swab, a pick, and some other things. But while I'm doing that, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, if you want to leave those questions in the comment section, I will try to answer those questions for you. And uh, we'll do our best uh, to get you an answer if I don't know what the answer to that question is. All right. I don't have an answer for why would people use that spray other than it's convenient. All right, I think we, for the most part we've got that. I've seen all kinds of, of sprays and that. I've seen uh, graphite-like lock-ease in here. I've seen all kinds of things. Go with the fishing wheel oils and greases. They don't cost much, and they're certainly going to be a lot better in terms of pro prolonging the life of your reel. And one more little piece of stuff there. All right, I'm going to call that one pretty good. I'm going to take that burring off now. I'm going to hope that maybe I have a replacement burring for that. That's, we had noise making, but we had noise making for all kinds of reasons. And I, can, I can kind of hear it's noisy there. All right, do the same thing here with the pinion gear. Use that brush, get all of the old creases out of there. Use a pick. I got all kinds of picks laying around here. Just run it into the channel. I can see where that grease is sticking right there. So make sure you. Kind of run it out. 
This is a dental pick or something. I found it at a local flea market. There's not uh, no magic with that. Probably find them online. Okay. All right, pretty good. I'm gonna hose it down one more time with the penetrating oil. It's good to as a solvent for the greases. And I'm gonna grab my uh, my box of burning to see if I happen to have a replacement. I'm gonna shut the camera off for a moment. Okay, I was fortunate enough to find the replacement burring. That, that's gonna go a long way to helping this thing go easier. Now we're going to just go ahead and reassemble. We want to get a good amount of fishing reel grease onto the slots in this pinion gear. This should run a lot quieter and it will run with an anti-reverse feature, so go figure. I'm going to get the bearing. I'm going to have to reorder these bearings. But the bearing can go on. Yep, spins a whole lot nicer than it was. Now we can put that bearing assembly and pinion gear back into the enclosure. Go ahead and get our collar. Now if we weren't paying attention with the collar, we would look back to our pictures, but this collar's got a flat side on it, and the flat side faces the anti-reverse override. In case you were wondering. I'm going to put the two hold down screws in. So this is an example of where not trying to do the right thing the wrong way is just as bad as doing nothing, maybe even worse. Somebody tried to do the right thing by keeping their reel lubricated. Unfortunately, they used the wrong lubrication. Not unusual. All right, now we remember we've got the assembly that goes like this. And you want to seat the piece over the shaft and you want to make sure that you align your anti-reverse dog with the hole that tie down screw and then start the tie down screw. Now that tie down screw has got a, uh, a little cup on it there so you're going to have to make sure that it seats properly inside that anti-reverse dog. If you leave it proud or if you kind of jam it in well you're not going to get any action there at all. Drop of oil below it and let's see we want to put our Click ratchet on next. And then you want to tighten this whole piece up. So again, if you're riding, you're going to be fine. Notice that the anti-reverse dog is way out of the way. As soon as you go to back pedal a reel, it should pull it in, just like that. Now we have an anti-reverse. That's how it works. Okay, new bearing, cleaned up center. I'm going to go ahead and oh, look at that. We've uh, Somehow we've managed to spray underneath the rotor, which has no purpose whatsoever. No moving parts. Overspray. So that's exactly what happened there. It's overspray. All right. Well, while we have this open, take care of business. There's a spring-driven dog here. That's going to be the trip lever. Put a little bit of oil on that. Oil the seams of your bale. You do not need to remove the bale unless it's not working. Hold your pinion gear from underneath. Align your rotor cap. Go ahead and get your rotor nut. Tighten it because, well, if you cross strip it, you're going to have trouble. Tighten it up completely now. Give it a whirl. Gee, no noise. What do you like? No noise to that bearing at all. 
and we have an anti-reverse. Wow, two for two. All right, let's, uh, let's finish this up then. Next up then, you're going to want to put your crosswind block in. You want to clean the main shaft. We've inspected and we've cleaned the teeth. Next up, you want to grease the main teeth of the gear. And you don't have to get it in every tooth. When it rotates, it's got a smaller gear and that pinion gear that it's rotating against, so it will spread the grease. Don't put too much in because it's just going to ride on the side and, well, that's not going to have any value at all. Then go ahead and seat your main gear, just like that. Next up, we want to grab our axle shaft. We know that it was nice and smooth coming in and out, so we're going to take it that it's nice and smooth. Whoops, that was a whoops. Just looked in my case and found out that the bushing is not there. Now it is. Main gear, bring your axle shaft in. Seat that into your crosswind block carrier. Just like that, there's a hole there. You're going to need to align that hole with the hole in the axle shaft. And you want to grab the screw for that, put that in. And if you're like me, a little clumsy, just take your time. Eventually you'll get it. Of course, with you, you're not under the pressure of well, filming it. So you can call this the comedy hour and let everybody laugh that needs to have a laugh. Alright, that's in. A little bit of grease onto the face of the main gear where that arm is going to ride. We mentioned with the arm that there's a rounded side that faces out. So we need to do a rotational kind of thing here. you can work this. Find this the top end. Mount it onto the post. Mount it on there. Now normally, I'm not seeing it, but normally you would have a little uh, plastic, uh, copper washer on there, but I guess the bushing being what it is is doing both. So we should be able to close the case up now. And we have the three case screws. That's next. So looks can be deceiving. I think that's a message behind this fishing reel. One of the things we found out is it looks beautiful, but some, through some poor maintenance practices, well, the greases used clog the anti-reverse piece so that it couldn't function properly. And ultimately, it probably destroyed that bearing that's on the top of the reel because, well, probably just brought dirt and junk in there and that's why you had a crying burn. So there you go. All right, the bottom of the reel is almost done. We just want to grab our handle and bring the handle on. And what I like to do with the handles is there's an opening here, so I do like to put a drop of oil into the opening so that the shaft stays lubricated. All right, last up then is to just work on the, the drag washers here. I'm not sure what type of drag washers are in this one. It's been a while. Uh, it could be felt. It could be uh, fabric or it could be Teflon. If I was to guess, I would say Teflon based on the style of wheel at the time. But let's find out. I'm going to remove the stack. Just like that, I have the stack so that I know it. And I, I guessed right. I guessed right. It's a Teflon washer in there. We just did a, uh, a reel with Teflon washers in there. All right, same thing here. Clean it up, wipe them off, make sure that they're nice and clean. And then you can just put them in the same way that they came out. So you're gonna find two of these round washers without points that have a rectangular center. One goes high and one goes low. In the middle, you're gonna find a washer that has two tabs on it. That's called an ear washer. And that always goes in the middle of a six drag set. I just saw the Versa, Versa drag set from Penn, and that's interesting. I'm going to do a video on that one because, uh, well, you, you have the option to 
move those around as you, uh, depending on how you want those uh, washers to perform, light, medium, or heavy. Is your spring clip that holds that in, find the groove, tuck one corner in, and then work it around until you tuck all three of those points in and make sure they're seated in the groove. Screw goes on next, align it, let's bring that uh, adjuster knob up, tighten it down to make sure that you have the drags. We do, and then loosen it up. You don't want to press them down. Well, here's the moment of truth. What did we get out of this deal? Wow. No noise. It's amazing what a new burying can do. And an anti-reverse. Well, two for two. All because that gummed up uh, grease there was the cause of the issue there. So that's it. That's your pen, 105C, 1970s, made in Japan fishing reel. Beautiful reel on the outside, some work had to be done on the inside, and there you go. I hope you've enjoyed that. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do to keep us safe. To everyone, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.